everyone. Welcome to Treasure, a channel that is meant to inspire, encourage, and empower women around the world. My name is Glory Ahere Okokere, and I have a very special guest uh, with us today. And um, he is Pastor Ambulus Gagel. He is also the, the founder of God Good News Ministry in the San Fernando Valley, as well you know, as the founder and leader of RevCon. Welcome uh, to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you have me here. Uh, Thank you. So my father is the founder of FGGM, uh, Finger of God. I'm the second branch, but I am the founder of Refcon Movement. You're the founder of Refcon Movement. Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, for for that uh, correction. No, we don't want to take anything away from your father now. (laughs) (laughs) Especially because he's going to watch this. I don't want us to have to redo this. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Welcome. And today we, we're going to talk about um, the black identity and the Christian religion. Mm. You are, I mean, a pastor of, you know, a, a church and also, you know, a leader of a, a very large, you know, uh, Christian group, especially for, you know, young people as well. You've been very influential in the lives of young people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I know that, you know, because I know my daughter is also a member of RevCon. Yes. You know, so my um, question to you, you know, now is um, explain, you know, to our viewers, you know, what you think is, I mean, the biggest impact on black people and religion. Mm, mm. Thank you for that question. First of all, thank you again for having me here. Uh, it's th- this topic, I couldn't uh, stress how important it is. Uh, it is very crucial because I think that the black church today, or rather black individuals are going through uh, quite an interesting time in history, especially with the, uh, the whole movements we've seen in the United States of black people being killed on the streets. And, and so there's this been this re- a resurgence of questions questioning uh, what is the place of the black church? What does Christianity mean to black people, especially for a good uh, group of young individuals that I have been uh, privy to mentor and talk to? I have seen a lot of young people leave the church, if not also the church, but a lot of white churches because they felt as though it's, it's as if Christianity lost its place in time or it's not sufficient to dealing with these problems or this thing. And I know you would have heard a lot of this, uh, a lot of people starting to say that Christianity is a white man's religion, right? And so this whole arguments are coming. And so this is where it culminates for me. So I will, I will have to lay a little bit of a, 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 a preface to answering this question. If I'm rambling on too long, just cut in. I don't mind. We're good. <laughs> okay, now, go ahead. <laughs> now, one of the things, and I'm going to be talking from a Christian context, especially uh, my doctorate that I'm actually working on comes, uh, deals with this a lot. Uh, the psychology of religion, uh, liberation theology, comparative theology, and philosophies. And this is what I work on quite a bit. So I lose sleep over topics like this. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we're going to have to understand is <clears throat> each human being comes to religion with a context. And what does that mean? Every person that receives Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior has a subjective context. And and what that means is every person comes to the place of receiving Jesus with a past experience. Based on your past experiences, it determines how you define what Jesus means to you and what it is uh, you expect from Jesus. There are some Christians uh, that say, you know what? I received Jesus because I know I am a sinner and I know I'm saved by grace. And you know what? That's it for me. But a good majority of Christians, as a book um, uh, by, written by Anthony B. Penn, he talks about this a lot. And, and uh, he talks about the fact that for a lot of black individuals, uh, 
The context for which we came to Christianity with is predicated on what has happened to us in the in the past. In the past, okay. Like you said. And, and, and so one of the things that is quite interesting, what happened in the past is this. He believes that people came to religion, whether it is Christianity or the nation of Islam, for the simple need of regaining their subjective identities. And this is what that means. Black people were brought, uh, were first of all, white people came to Africa and cap- captured black people. Exactly. They put them in dungeons. They came, they brought them across the Atlantic Oceans. A lot of them died in the ship. So a lot of people that made it here as slaves got to see their families and friends die in the ships. When they got here, they were placed on fr- in front of, uh, as they were sold as animals, as merchandise. When they were sold, they were sold to individuals that either beat them or treated them wrong. And so, and then at the end of the day, they were just left to die. So from the beginning to the end, you find out that the black people that came through the process of slavery, their context was, we were treated as animals, we were treated as not human beings, we were ob- objectified, we were oppressed. 400 years later or years down the line, the descendants of those slaves still feel as though society still has a context where they are objectified and are considered less than humans and are no, as of recent were just allowed to vote and they don't feel as though that they are human being enough. Anthony B. Penn argues that the way we found an identity was through the, the, the idea of conversion. Okay. We convert from what we are to what we want to be. And so we converted from being considered less to Christians. And as Christians, we received back our worth. So Christianity was not just about following Jesus. It was about regaining worth and an identity, a black identity that was as equal to the white man. Right now, just notice that I just gave why black people see religion as important to gaining identity. But one thing that's happening is, and and this is what went wrong along the way, especially where we've identified Christianity with the white race or, or black people that go to white churches have left. And this is why we forget that as black people, we have a context when we came to Jesus. We forget that white people have a context too. Uh, and, ex- explain, explain that. I, I will. I will. <laughs> White people have a context too. And what is their context? Now, let's go back in history. Remember when the Crusades happened, where, where, where uh, people killed in the name of Jesus? Okay, yes. That was their context. Their context was world domination. Whatever your context is, you end up adding Jesus on top of it. Hmm. Let's say as a person, what you want to do is go and colonize Let's say that's what your country wants. In order for your country to be rich, you have to go colonize another country. And let's say you're a Christian. Guess what you're going to do? You're going to start thinking along these lines. Because I am a Christian and I'm in the will of God and God wants me to prosper, I'm going to go colonize that country because they are not Christians. And when I go and give them religion, I'm also Christianizing them. And so I'm making them a part of my belief system because by me preaching the gospel to that country, I'm taking the good news. Therefore, my colonization is not a bad thing. It's actually a good thing because Jesus wants it. In other words, they seek justification you know, for, for their actions. And they believe it. No, but it's, it, it's, they justify it, but it's not just justifying it. They honestly believe, believe that when they were colonizing another country, they were taking Jesus Christ there. Mm-hmm. So this takes okay. me to this place of saying this, that human beings, the motive that you come to Jesus with determines how you use Jesus. Mm, okay, that's a big so, one. So why, So now the race that ended up colonizing, slaving black people and, and ended up uh, where their descendants are here today, if you honestly ask them, their context 
causes them to believe that God was with them. That is why they had so much power over the black race. No. Okay. Does that also, I mean, tr- I mean, translate to how they see um, white uh, supremacy? Does that have anything to do with that? Is there, a, cor- is there a correlation? Um, Absolutely. With that? Without without religion, the, I, they don't see themselves as thinking superior. But without the concept of religion, they would not have been able to have that superior mentality. Because you see, the problem of this is this. Let me let me give you an example. It goes back to even just recently, just recently. I I my master's degree. I had to go to Bible school. As of the fifties, there was a doctrine that God actually created white people with an advanced prelobe cortex that was more advanced than black. People. In fact, there was in science, it was scientifically proven back in the 50s that black people were created with a primordial brain that was equivalent to that of a lizard. I think I heard something along, I've read something along that line, you know. <laughs> so Exactly. I, yeah. I think all of that, those were just like, you know, doctrines to actually um, justify, you know, or uh, the concept, you know, of white supremacy. That is where all of that, I think, originated from. You know, but... That's true. Also, yeah, but in this case, I know that um, in the past, um, dating back to the days of slavery, um, black people have always seen, you know, religion as a form of, um, a way of, you know, comfort, hope, you know, solace, even while, you know, they were going through, you know, that, you know, um, I would say inhumane persecution, you know, at that time, all in the name, you know, of slavery. Now, you know, explain, you know, to our viewers, I mean, what, I mean, has changed now, or do you still see an element of that, you know, still happening today? Or has there been somewhat of, you know, a divergence, you know, from that? Or are we still, you know, pretty much, you know, I mean, operating in that realm today? Okay, so we see a small minority of Black people trying to deviate from that. Mm. But no, it's, it's still as strong as it was. And let me explain what that means. I brought up Anthony B. Penn, and that's where I was transitioning to, where, no, The motive, because we are a lot of black people, and I'm talking about the black church in a general context. Correct. Because black people come from a place of oppression, our context in Christianity is liberation. Mm -hmm. And this is why Christianity was used during the, the civil rights movement. Yes. So, and, and so why, that is why you're also seeing that the black church is very adamant about using Jesus to free black people. And if Jesus is the Jesus that we're talking about, then he would want us to be liberated. It has not moved away from that. That is because the context of the black person is, if Jesus is who he is, then he didn't just save me on the inside, he also saved me on the outside. And that's where James Cone comes in. And so, so those are the individuals that wrote a lot about black liberation theology, where Jesus didn't just save me on the inside, he also also saved me on the outside. And so yeah. the fight that we're fighting here is this. And this is where I start giving us the context of why this is actually very serious. And, and, I, I, and I hope a lot of black people are watching this because this, there's this idea that some of us black people have that white Christians actually know and I, I'm going to ruffle some feathers by what I'm about to say, but just give me an go opportunity ahead. to fix this. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. But they're actually sitting there intentional, mm. intentionally endorsing oppression for the black man, and they don't see it, and, and they're just giving excuses. I honestly mean this. I honestly mean this. What is the excuse? Uh, what are those excuses? They, I mean... Uh, Oh, like they, we, we, we black people love to think that, um, well, they give excuses, uh, like we think that they give excuses like, uh, like, you know, like when white people say, no, 
uh, we're not trying to oppress you. We're all equal. You know, like, you know, you know, you're the, you guys are the ones that can't see it. We're not even trying to be racist. We're not trying to be white supremacist. You know, when they say that black people think that, no, these are just excuses. We can see the reality. I, I'm trying to bring up where the contention takes place. And this is where the contention takes place. Remember this. Black people have a context that is predicated on experience and white people have a context that is predicated on their experience. Black, black people want liberation because our experience says we've been objectified and oppressed. White people's experience is that God is with us. That is why our country is great. By, uh, by, and what they see black people trying to do is change the foundation of their greatness to in in include to them socialist ideas that will destroy their context. Black people are saying, no, no, you have to destroy your context because your context is oppressing me. All well, of us. Okay, hold up. You know, Pastor Bullets, let me, let me, since you just said that, now talking about Christianity and, you know, um, what Christ, Christians are followers of Christ. Yeah. If indeed, you know, that's the case. Now, if you look at those social issues, you know, that you just talked about. Yeah. Uh, or what they or what a lot of people want to just maybe they want to think that um, th uh, those are not um, you know how would I put it now? I mean the social issues that we are talking about right now. Those those are the things that Christ actually endorsed. Like you know, okay, providing healthcare for everyone. You know, loving everyone, making provision for the poor. You know, I mean, taking care of the poor, the Bible will say, and he had compassion on them. You know, he fed those that were hungry. You know, so those things that, you know, that they consider, you know, that is about to ruin, you know, that special thing that, you know, what is always been. Don't you think those are actually the principles of Christianity? Okay. Examples that Christ showed us as okay. you know, as Christians. You know, I mean, why mm. would you know why would you not want to provide um health care for everyone? Why would you want to oppress the poor? You know, why would you you know not want to make provision for them? Those to me are actually I mean biblical, you know, principles that if indeed we are a Christian nation, we should embrace. Okay. Not, 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 they call it socialism, you know, but it's not really, you know, that's not, or that's not about socialism, but it's really what Christ did and what Christ preached. So, okay. That brings me to this point. And this is where, before I say this, I have to say this. <clears throat> Black people have a context. White people have a context. Mm -hmm. And both sides believe that they're doing the will of God. That's where our problem starts. Both believe mm -hmm. that both of them, these things you just said, love, all of that. Compassion. Compassion. Yes. Caring Good. for the poor. Yes, providing for the less privileged. Uh -huh. Yes, lifting them up. Yes, yes, inspiring them, encouraging them. Yes. yes. Yeah, going out, you know, for those, the oppressed, trying to, you know, I mean, provide upliftment for them. Those are all basic principles of Christianity. There's a, there's a moral psychologist that I want to recommend to your viewers. His name is Jonathan Hayded. And a lot of people might know him. He's not a Christian. He's an atheist. A lot of the books I have to read are, comes from moral psychologists. And so a lot of the things I'm talking about is not even as just as a pastor. It's about a moral psychologist. I'm talking as a, the philosophy of religion itself. That's what I'm doing. Everything you said, everything you said, the reason why we don't get along is because your definition of what you thought Jesus was talking about is not everybody's decisions that it's not how everybody interprets what Jesus was talking about. Let me tell you even why you interpret the workings of Jesus the way you did. It is your experiences determines how you interpret what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. What they're, and they're coming from a 
dominating perspective. And they're saying, what you're talking about is not even the way Jesus did those things. And, and this is where now I answer your question. I actually don't believe that between the white race and the black race, we can actually start defining things the right way without the third context. Mm -hmm. A totally different context. Because this is why, let me give you why. If black people, if we continue to say, mm -mm, nope, nope, you guys are wrong, come here into my context and start to accept me the way I tell you to, they're gonna say, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Take yeah. this out. Then low, let's say white people go, or rather the white church, let me put it that way, not every white person says, no, you black people need to start seeing it from our context. Guess what we're gonna say? Over my dead body. Hmm. We're not gonna go anywhere. What's the third context? The third context is where Christianity truly comes in. Yes, which is, which is the premise of love but what, love. but what does love mean? And what does compassion mean? That's, that is how we're going to, on both sides, are going to have to interpret that together. And this is where black, the black church and the, and the white church need to come together and say that our main premise, and I'm going to put it this way first, that Christ Jesus has to come before the nation does. And I'll explain what that means. Mm -hmm. Christ before state and Christ before race. What does Absolutely. that mean? That means I am first a Christian before I am an American. Because mm -hmm. when you talk to the white church, their biggest problem, or rather the Republicans or the white supremacists, their biggest problem is keeping the value and the sanctity of the country that they believe is founded on the word of God. And, and what Jonathan Hayden talks about is this. Democrats, and now I'm going to do a Democrat-Republican thing. Yeah, but well, hold on. Before you do that, let me just, before, you know, I don't want to forget this point based on what you just said. But isn't it the same, you know, founding fathers, you know, in, I mean, the document, they also, you know, said that all men are created equal. <laughs> Yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Just, I, just, I just want to. I want. I want to just want to clarify that and put that out there. Yes. Go ahead. Based on uh, our new contemporary definition of equality, you and I both know what equality is now. Yeah. Right. And so we're gonna have to even understand what they meant by man is created equal. Right. So yes. So yes, on the foundations of scripture, now we, you and I both, we understand that. But now when you talk to an American that says, let's, let's take immigration for a second. Let's take the immigration or let's even take the, the health care you said. One of the reasons why the Republicans keep saying that it is not lawful, it is against constitution, is because they believe that one of the things that has made America great was the fact that they have the ability to stick to law and not force people to just act out of what they term emotionality. So they believe America is more than just, if, if showing compassion will bring our country down, that is not a wise compassion. So to them, they think, they see it as, if we come about now just giving free money away in healthcare and all of that, the country will go broke, will become like Venezuela, where now we've become a socialistic country, where all the rich people now can't go rich. This whole dream of people wanting to come to America will not be there anymore. That's how they think. Country mm. before Christ. Mm. Okay. Now, but black people now, we're thinking, well, no, or rather, let me say, we the blacks, right? We're thinking, no, uh, we've been underrepresented. We've been broken. We as the black race, we need to be catered to. We need to be given to, and, and right? And so what, what we want is we're demanding for our rights by giving it. And they're going, no, we're not going to subscribe to such a context. So what do yeah, I, I, and I think the blacks are also, you know, um, demanding for, you know, equity, you know, and equality as well. Absolutely. Yes, because Absolutely. I mean, whether we want to, whether we really want to accept it or not, or say it, you know, is this just what it is? There is, you know, that um, disparity, 
you know, in education, housing, wealth, you know, yeah, all of that between, and I agree with you. between yeah, you know, white and minorities, yeah. period. We know, yes. we know that, you know, yeah. that, that um, inequality and that disparity does exist. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So we know that that has been established. So, yeah, you know, go ahead, you know, with your yeah. point. We, we, so, don't, we, we want to just establish that that, that, that is there. So that is how, there. How do we address it and how do we meet at a point, you know, where, I mean, this side is, okay, yeah, we met you halfway and then the other side said, okay, we met you halfway so we the can live, context. Yes. live together as Christians, you know, and that we are. And this is where I believe the answer comes in. The third context. And, 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 and I don't know how many people I'm offending by saying this, but I'm saying that the white race needs to realize that if you are a Christian, Jesus comes first before country. And if for the black people, we need to realize that although the truth is we do have a context that is, is true and legit, being the minorities right? What I am actually saying is that we are Christians first before being black. Correct. And what I mean by that is the third... Oh, that is, that's that's how it should be. It should be, exactly. Okay. But let me even explain what that means, though, because I don't want to be taken out of context here, because I am black, and I do believe there is systematic racism. But I've just come to see that we can only solve this problem as Christians in one way. Mm-hmm. Not the way we're doing it, where we're constantly conflicting against our white brethren. Mm-hmm. I honestly believe it's coming through the third context. And what is the third context? When we start relating with Jesus, not simply based on our context, but actually accepting the context that Jesus gave us to accept. And what does that mean? When you are a Christian, you are admitting that there's a third option. And what is the third option? The kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. And, and this is where I love, uh, I believe his name is uh, Thurman. He wrote a book about this, a black individual. And, and, and one of the things I love about his book is this, the fact that if we truly say we are Christians, that our new context that we need to be working towards is to how to build a community of people that empathize to each other's contexts. We come to the table as we are, so we don't forget that we are black, we don't forget that we are white, but we now create a new goal that both of us are willing to live up to, and that is building the kingdom of God. And if we're going to build the kingdom of God, then, then what that does is it opens us up to understand that the black man is not trying to tear down your nation. And the, and the white man is, 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 is going to have to understand that they're not there to tear us down anymore. But as the equality that you're talking about, we are different, but we are one. one. In Christ. In Christ. But the context has to be trying to build the kingdom of God. But because if we keep our context, the white church keeps trying to build the nation and the black church keeps trying to build the efficiency or the efficacy of the black man, what will happen is we're just going to be clashing. But when we build Christ, the white man will start sympathizing with the system. I mean, breaking down the system and exalting their black brothers and sisters. And the black person will look to the white person as a brother and not simply simply just an oppressor. That's the only context we can come in. And this is where I say this. A lot of black people left the white churches because they made the mistake of creating Christianity to be synonymous with the white man. Mm. And the problem with that is this. If you are one of those that left your churches, what the mistake that you made is you forgot that your pastor was a human being with a context. And what the problem is, is that instead of seeing that your pastor is not Christianity, Jesus is Christianity. Christianity. And before I forget, I'm sorry to interrupt you. know, do you know that this happened, you know, I mean, so this was a lot more prevalent in our past election. Yes, ma'am. Than, yes, ma'am. you know, even before, do you know, I just want to make sure that I, I put that out there. A yeah. lot of black people start because the pastors, they took a stand. It was, it became um, politics first before, yes, Jesus, before Jesus. Yes, ma'am. 
So it made a lot of black people very uncomfortable yes, that ma'am. they had to leave, you know, their church where they've been worshiping for a long time. I agree. Yes, I know that very well because this hits very close, you know, to home. Ma'am, you know, I, yeah, for me. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of friends. Yeah. Um, I lost relationships because of this election. Yeah, people wonder why I have done, you know, a lot of videos about this election. People don't really know what's at stake and where, you know, this country has been, you know, for the past four years. A lot of yeah. people really do not understand. Or yeah. maybe they, they know because it's such a delicate, you know, topic and very controversial. People are staying away from it. You know, yeah. this, this is the reality. This is what we are living every day. Yeah. We have to address this you know, these things, you know, talk about it, then we can find a way, you know, forward. But yeah. first, we, we must ad- admit that this does exist. This is, you know, what we are living, you know, ev- yeah. every day. So yeah. um, go ahead, I, please. I agree with you 100%, but I've, I've decided to take a, a, a different approach. I had many opportunities to leave groups, organizations, because I'm not gonna lie to you, this whole idea of country first over Christ really messed with me in this election. Mm. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm gonna even tell you something here. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't usually share my political views at all. And that's because I've, of how embarrassing I think Christianity has become when it comes to politics. Mm. I tell people that were around me a lot whenever they said they believed that Trump was the will of God and the, the perception of God and he was going to influence the will of God, ask anyone that has to- spoken to me about politics. I told them, I said, let us say, let us say hypothetically that it was the will of God for Trump to be president. I guarantee he will lose the next election. I told them. Mm. I told everybody, I said, from, if I am truly a person that understands how God works, Let us just hypothetically say that Trump was supposed to be president, he would lose. And this is why I said he would lose. Because people have ended up taking Trump as the Christians, white America, have made Trump the savior. Mm, Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've turned him into the will of God, as though God was Republican. I knew we were, I knew Trump was going to lose that one. And I still don't know. He's in court, but I felt this was going to happen. Why? Because I don't believe that's how God works. Mm. I don't believe that we as Christians need to start making those mistakes of connecting our subjective context with Jesus. Jesus is not in the box with us. Mm. In fact, I think it is a failure of Christianity to start politicizing what Christianity is to the point that we can't as a church talk anymore. In fact, it has driven a wedge between us. I honestly believe the way black people like Martin Luther King can change minds is by preaching the gospel the way the, is by preaching equality the way we would preach the gospel is by living it as an example. I, I, let, me, let me tell you this. Do you know this was so bad? That when it <laughs> this <laughs> what we what we are just talking about right now from my own personal experience, it was so bad when the you know the, the pastor of course you know Caucasian when he went on and on and on and on about Trump 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 and this my husband just had it up to here he's like you know what we're leaving I mean like literally walked out of the church <laughs> so, oh that's right yeah yeah you know yeah. what I had, to, I had to pick up my Bible I'm like okay so. Because it's, no, it's ridiculous. I'm, it's telling, ridiculous. I'm telling you guys, people, yeah. this was really bad. It's, it's a shame. It, it happened in my daughter's church. Mm. You know, it happened in our, I mean, these wow. are ch- churches that are not even like, you know, related, like this. it's not the same church, it's not the same branch. Mm. But this was just everywhere, you know, yeah. across the nation. Yeah. A lot of pastors and evangelicals, they took a very hard line. You know, yeah. and then with that, everything just, you know, crumbled. Ma'am, People left, yeah. you know, yeah. the church. Okay, so in all of this, I was thinking, 
oh my Lord, where is Jesus Christ in yes, all? No. Where, where is the love? Where is the unity? Where is the compassion? Where, I mean, a house divided against itself cannot stand. And I was there thinking, why are people doing this? Yeah. We need to go back to what Christianity meant from the beginning. The whole idea, this is why a lot of young people are leaving too. They're, they're trying to say that Christianity belongs to the white man. No, 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 no. The version of Christianity we have now, yes, belongs to the white man. But the, the, lev- the Christianity that is in the Bible belongs to a Jewish man named Jesus. Mm. We need to learn how to differentiate between what we have turned Christianity into. So when we're leaving our, uh, the white churches, if we're leaving the churches we don't like, may we not leave Jesus though? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because yes. the truth about it here is this, that remember, this is why I started the way I did. I know I went on a rant about context, but it was very important. Your context determines what you expect of Jesus. And this is why I tell every Christian, we need the third context. Mm. I'm not coming to Jesus because I'm black and I need liberation. White people don't need to come to Jesus because they need a good country that, that is against black people. What we need to come to Jesus is we have a problem with our heart that is divisive in its very nature. Jesus transforms us. That Jesus becomes the reason why we live. Even the policies that we make on Capitol Hill will reflect Jesus and not division. And that's where it comes with the whole compassion thing you were talking about. We, it comes comes in with the whole giving, the social. Now, now when it comes to things like social health care and all of that, right? A lot of people would fight and say on the edge of the aisle and say, no, listen, that will end up bankrupting the country. People that have money, my children will pay more taxes than me because of policies like that. So yes, it looks good that everybody has health care, but where's the money coming from to pay for that? Things like that, yes, you can argue them. But, but, but that is not even to say that Christianity should legis- legislate things like that. Mm. Let politicians deal with things like that because the exactly. truth is, it deals with our pockets. But yeah. when it comes to things such as love, acceptance of people for their race, that belongs to Jesus. And, to Jesus. and if that is true, then we need to start looking across the aisle and not try to draw the other into our context. That's my main point. We should try, stop trying to draw people into our context because it's not going to work. Mm. No white person is going to wake up in the morning and go, hmm, I'm going to see things from a black perspective this morning. No, because they have their own context. And no black, black person is going to be like, okay, since white people have disagreed with me, I'm going to join them. None. We're not going to do that. So how do we get there? The third context, Jesus. Mm. But if we're going to say Jesus is it, then we need to stop being partisan. Mm. We need to stop supporting a political party and thinking, in in other words, I didn't say don't vote, but stop drawing Jesus into a political party, whether you're Democrat or Republican. Mm. It's either you're a Christian Christian. that is voting or or stop trying to say I'm Republican and this is what Jesus would have wanted. Or I'm Democrat, this is what Jesus, because that is where we start having problems. Because we politicize the Jesus. Jesus, yes. And I think that is really, you know, uh, key because of what, I mean, (laughs) where the country got to, especially with this past, you know, election, is how we can heal now. How we can heal, you know, that, you know, the divide. And everyone, you know, come together, you know, as one. And also, you know, as uh, believers. So it's really, really been a pleasure, you know, uh, talking to you, Pastor Bolos. Do you have any, anything you have to tell, um, you know, like ladies, to tell women, oh. especially, you know, because this channel is My supposed God. to encourage, inspire, you know, and empower women. Yeah. Yes. When I'm, when I'm talking to young women, especially, <clears throat> when I'm talking to older women, I like to remind them. And and I, in fact, this Thursday, when I was teaching RefCon in Bible study, I showed them something that if you follow the Old Testament and New Testament carefully, women actually drove the story of history. Mm. Whether it was Adam, whether it was 
Sarah, whether it was Rebecca, whether it was Ruth, whether it was Esther, Esther. whether it was Mary, the first person to preach the gospel was a woman. Mm. History has shown us that the strength of a woman is what carries history forward. It's not us men. Mm. Us men, we are, the, we are the ones that are in front of the camera. We are talking. We are loud. We are brave. But go look at the Bible carefully. A man's vision cannot even come to pass if a woman is not involved. That is Amen. why the Bible says a woman is the helpmate of the man. It's not she's just helping him. The reason why it's a woman that brings a baby out is because a woman brings life to reality. Okay. Mm. I would like to tell women not to give up mm. or to give in mm. or to stop fighting. I would like to tell women, do your best to be the strength that all a man can do is, you know, we, we, we bring the child, we try to raise them, but a, 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 a child remembers what the mother says. Mm. What a child becomes is what the mother engraves in them. Yes. The image of God they have, yes, could be the father, as science shows us. Mm. But the way mom speaks to a child's insides is what determines the future. I would tell a mother never to give up on Christ. Mm. Like the women held on to Christ. And, and the reason why the black church is here till today is because of women. It's because of women. Mm. It's because of women. I would love women, I would love if I was advising everyone to not, to, 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 to keep on going, not even because of the child, even at work, even you can, you can be, you can be anything God says you are. Yes. You can say any, you can become anything that God says you are. Not only that, but you are the reason why history still continues and God has used women. And that's what I mean to, to do so. So Keep going because God has used women to keep the church going. And I still believe he's using women to keep the church going. And so Amen. keep holding on to it because I believe that the, the, the future of black children holding on to Christ, I think honestly depends on women as well. Absolutely. And if I were to, you know, just add a little thing to that, it's, you know, women are still going to be very instrumental in healing this nation. Absolutely. I'm bringing the nation together. I believe it. Yes. They are also going to, I mean, be front and center of that. And um, if you, you know, like our content so far and you would like to see, you know, more of this, do not forget, you know, to uh, subscribe, share, uh, and uh, view our, our content as well. And Pastor Bolos, we would like to really thank you, you know, for coming. And we hope, you know, you'll come back. And also you can tell us a little more about RefCon. You didn't have the opportunity to do that. Can you just tell us one second about, you know, uh, RefCon, what sure. RefCon is all about? Sure. Um, again, thank you for having me here. I would, I'm so grateful for being here. This is a topic that has been on my heart, and uh, I, I hope I, I left a, a something here. Um, but um, yes, REFCON movement stands for Revolution Convention. And my ministry is just like the church as well, Finger of God, Good News Ministry. Uh, it has the same motto to introduce Jesus Christ again without the man-made stuff. And what we talked about today was a lot of man-made stuff. We bring our context and put it on Jesus and say, you have to fit to it. And, and what I told us today is we need the third context, and that's the context of Jesus oh, and Jesus. not ours, right? And so that's all my ministry stands for. My ministry stands for uh, reintroducing Jesus Christ without the man-made stuff. And, and the way we do that is by answering questions and, and showing us how practical ways that we can be Christians. And the third thing is we create opportunities for people to experience Jesus Christ. So it is, um, that's what my ministry is. And although RevCon movement tends to be more for the younger folks, we have all sorts of ages now and uh, we have a lot of things. And you can find us at RevCon movement, uh, at, at RevCon movement on, uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, or, or the church as well, FGGM Valley. Uh, .org is our website, but uh, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook as well, FGGM Valley. 
at FGD oh, Valley. Yeah, thank you so much. I know my daughter is um, actively involved in RevCon, yes. you know, She's as amazing. well. She's so, amazing. She's <laughs> amazing. Thank you. Yes. It, it's it's so um is uh, is it's really instrumental and inspirational, you know, for young people, you know, as well. You know, thank you so much for doing what you do. We really do thank appreciate you. it. At least we have learned something today. And then we, that is for us to, you know, put Jesus first. We yeah. should leave our own, you know, contest. Yeah. contest and, you know, whether Republicans, Democrats, Black, White, you know, independents, we need to come together, you know, as one. And we need to start, you know, by putting Jesus first. Like, what would Jesus do? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, you know, Pastor Thank Willis, you. one more time. We appreciate you. And please, you know, come back. We'll love again. to. We'll love Thank you. you. And thank you so much, you know, our viewers um, for being with us today. Yes, it's a it's a long video, but it's it's worth the time. We wanted to take the time to, I mean, discuss issues like this. And until I see you next time, uh, please, you know, stay safe and uh, be safe with your family. Thank you so much. And thank you for coming, Pastor Thank you very much.